interacting with other people, it is clear that others may be vastly different from our own selves. Those differences, and in many cases similarities, are usually what we consider personality. Typically, we're not only interested in understanding others, but many of us are also interested in understanding ourselves. Why am I interested in math and science over painting and sculpting? How did I end up as a statistician as my main profession? Because I made many, many, many mistakes. People have been trying to answer these and many other questions about personality for ages, and one popular explanation focuses on what's known as hemisphericity, that our personality and cognitive styles are determined by which side of our brains, the left or right, are dominant. So today on Brief Brain Facts, we're discussing hemisphericity as a hypothesis for personality. Am I left-brained or right-brained? Well, according to this online quiz that's totally based in science, I'm more left-brained, more organized and analytical than right-brained, artistic and creative. Sure, that makes sense. I mean, I do like to argue utilizing facts and figures. But what about the fact that I won an award for my writing and poetry? Or the fact that I'm pretty much late to everything? Well, part of my personality is, when I have some bad news to dispense, I don't hold back. With that being said, let's just rip off that band-aid. The idea of one being left or right brain dominant is bullshit and a great example of pseudoscience. But before I discuss why this is the case, let's get a bit more acquainted with that thing in our heads, not just our voices, but our brains. If we consider the human brain to be a three-dimensional puzzle, two major sections comprise the human brain, the cerebrum and cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for intentional movement and things like balance and coordination. It's a small part of the brain when compared to the other part of the puzzle, the cerebrum. The cerebrum contains the cerebral cortex and is probably the portion of the brain you may immediately recognize. It's responsible for higher order functioning, such as making judgments and planning, as well as integrating all of our senses so that we can interact with our world more effectively. Looking more closely at the cerebral cortex, it is clear that there are two distinct parts. These sections are divided by a line known as the longitudinal fissure, and this is what divides the cerebral cortex straight down the middle into the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The two hemispheres communicate with each other via the corpus callosum, the largest white matter structure in the brain. The corpus callosum can comprises of long axons, types of neurites that send electrical impulses away from the cell bodies of neurons. So why do I bring up that the two hemispheres communicate with each other via the corpus callosum? Well, that's an excellent question. Me. <laughs> The left brain, right brain personality or cognitive styles myth comes from real life instances. And this may account for why it's so intractable, because there's a kernel of truth amidst the inaccuracies. Back in the 1960s and 70s, a neuropsychologist named Roger Sperry, aiming to minimize epileptic seizures and the resulting brain damage, severed or cut the corpus callosum. The primary discovery was that without an intact corpus callosum, the two hemispheres didn't know each other existed. Some impairments were seen in these patients, particularly deficits in visual information and processing were noted. In one experiment, these split brain patients were presented one object to the left visual field and another object to the right visual field. The patients were told to draw with their left hand what they had been shown in their right visual field, but the patients would accurately draw what had been presented to their left visual field, and when asked what they had drawn, would describe the object that had been presented to their right visual field. In 1981, Sperry was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for his split brain work. What Sperry's work highlights about the right brain left brain dichotomy is that the corpus callosum plays an integral role in assuring that the two hemispheres work together. Other aspects of his work show that there is hemispheric specialization, but it's not as simple as the right hemisphere being solely responsible for language ability, while the left hemisphere is responsible for mathematical ability. For example, the left hemisphere processes grammar and literal meaning. Alternatively, the right hemisphere is responsible for understanding verbal metaphors and processing implied meaning. In this case, both hemispheres play a role in language ability, and this kind of specialization isn't just restricted to language. Importantly, this highlights the fact that both hemispheres work in tandem or together. Further, people don't have a dominant hemisphere, as we generally need and are always utilizing both hemispheres. Arguably, the idea that each hemisphere is responsible for cognitive styles that dominates the other has run amok. But don't just take my word for it. As Sperry himself stated, experimentally observed polarity in right-left cognitive style is an idea in general with which it is very easy to run wild. It is important to remember that the two hemispheres in the normal, intact brain tend regularly to function closely together as a unit. So the next time someone tells you that they're either left-brained or right-brained, you can laugh because you know that unlike them, you use the entire thing. How long did you believe in the left-brain-right-brain myth? Comment below.
just comment below. It's really not that hard. Just saying. And and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. It's super easy to subscribe to the channel. I'm really surprised nobody's subscribing to our channel. And I blame you.